today I'm here with Brock Nelson. And Brock is a professional hockey player for the New York Islanders and has played in the NHL since 2012. He is originally from Warroad, Minnesota, and played for the University of North Dakota Fighting Hawks while majoring in pre-investment. Welcome to the Summit, Brock. Really excited to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. So, Brock, while you have not had a documented concussion playing in the NHL, um, you still um, ventured to see Dr. Schmo at the Functional Neurology Center, and he really helped you hone in on some of your balance and cognitive stuff as more of like a preventative treatment. Yeah, I didn't have any major symptoms or, or any concussion uh, on the on record that uh, that sent me in, but I was referred to him by somebody who just mentioned that they had seen some benefits in what he did uh, in the office there in the clinic and had transitioned over to, to daily life and on the ice and mm -hmm. was just looking for an edge in any way I could and uh, went in there and did uh, I think we did like an extensive three or four day program and he kind of diagnosed a couple, a couple things. There was a couple things with my eyes that he picked up on, uh, some eye tracking, um, and then some brain stuff going on where he did some treatment for that as well. And, uh, it was pretty, pretty clear and evident. It was within, you know, the first couple of times that I had noticed, I went back to Jeremy and I told him that, uh, I noticed a big difference balance, uh, on the ice strength, everything just kind of felt easier, more efficient, um, and told them that I'll, I'll be coming back for for whenever I have any any symptoms or if I do end up with a concussion knock on wood that that I don't but um, he's able to kind of treat it yeah yeah and I <clears throat> excuse me I think you know doing some of this stuff preventatively too um, you know the more balanced we are the more cognitive we are the less chance we have of even sustaining a concussion right yeah yeah um, yeah Preventative stuff is big, especially like as an athlete, like you, you take so many different hits that you might not think that anything really happened, but there's definitely some lingering symptoms that are underlying that you might not even see that he's able to kind of pick up on. Yeah. And you've played hockey since you were how old? Uh, just a couple, probably two or three. I was probably out on the skates. Yeah. Being from War Road, I only imagine. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hockey, it's in, in the blood up there and it's just what everybody does and grow up. That's all you do. At some yeah. point, I'm sure we had a couple, a uh, couple spills or a couple hits that uh, kind of, kind of knocked you off loop. Yeah, yeah. And um, so, what were some of the things that Jeremy did with you? I'm, I'm guessing you got to experience the gyro stem. Yeah, the gyro stem. I'm a big, I'm a big fan of the gyro stem. So I, I've, I did that quite a bit with him during the extensive program, and then actually during the season this year when we played Minnesota, I went back. And had him check me out again just to kind of see and get a tune-up mid-season, figure it out would help. And uh, he threw me back in there. And uh, it's I, I think it's fun being a, an athlete and competitor. It's kind of uh, kind of fun going in there with the lasers and, and spinning around. It's it's almost like a little game, but uh, you do feel pretty good after and, and balanced. Uh, and it's just like a little rush, but kind of resets everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, um, he puts me in there when my – so my eyes – sometimes the left eye will kind of drift out as a result yeah. from my brain injury. And he has a rotation. It's just two backward rotations yeah. I do in there, but man, I yeah. feel like sharp and crisp when I get out of there. <laughs> Everything, everything's easier tracking everything. I had he kind of picked up on something similar to that. Like I think just the way I'm set up as a, uh, as left-handed, like my eyes always mm -hmm. kind of trying to track out my right eye. So he, and I said I, he saw something where my right eye was kind of up and out and same thing. So I do a couple spins back to kind of just get reset and get going. And then he spins you all over. Yeah, I, I have to admit, I have always been really impressed when I've seen professional athletes in the gyro stem doing the laser. Yeah. Like, I mean, like me doing the laser is like beep beep and you yeah. guys are just like dun, 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 dun. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty I've, cool I've, to I've watch done, you guys i've gotten pretty good at it but he said that there's some guys some mma guys or astronauts that are they can take it to a whole other level in there yeah it's it's a crazy tool um so what are some of the other things he did with you i'm sure you did like um some balance stuff yeah. and we did uh, a lot of light board we did some balance stuff um we did some tilt table um mm. He picked up uh, actually the tilt table one. I think was a big one too. He picked up on, uh, I think my heart rate was kind of going up pretty high with not really much uh, tilting and uh, some dysautonomia. Yes, yeah, so he treated something, treated something there and got it back down uh, where it stayed level up and down a couple times. So that was that was pretty interesting and pretty cool. So um, 
yeah, we were kind of all over. We did some, uh, the, the virtual reality was a big one too. I think that one was pretty cool. I'd never done that. And we were doing, uh, single leg lunges and balance and squats yeah. and, uh, out on the boat. Uh, and it's pretty crazy how realistic it is. And it was, it was almost as hard as a workout, just doing a couple, uh, one legged, uh, you know, lunges, uh, for 30, 40 seconds, you're kind of off balance, but yeah. you could feel, you could feel all your muscles activate and get, uh, kind of get fired back up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And like Jerry, Jeremy has explained to me, cause I'm always, you know, when the first time he has you do lunges and squats for your eyes, yep. it's kind of like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> but it makes sense how, you know, he explains it like gravity is constantly on us. And when our eyes and our vestibular systems off, our body doesn't know where it is in space. So then you, you hold some weights and you do squats yeah. and lunges cause your legs are your biggest muscles. Yeah. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. He always said like the, uh, close your eyes, look to the left, look to the right, look up, look down. And he kind of picks up on, I think the first time I was in there, I kind of had like a little bit of a pattern he said where I was spinning and then he's able to kind of treat that. And like I got within a couple of days again, I was rock solid. I wasn't, uh, wasn't leaning anywhere. Were you a little surprised, like some of the first balance testing things he had you do? Were you a little surprised by the results? A little bit, yeah, because I, like, I, like I said, I didn't really have anything going on. So I was just kind of going in there with, I wasn't too sure what to expect. And I didn't know if I would notice anything like that significant. Um, and I was in pretty good shape. I had spent a couple months already training mid midsummer. Um, I was back to skating, uh, you know, three, four times a week. So I was in pretty good shape and thought I'd go in there and everything would kind of be a breeze. And then he kind of picked up on a couple of things and, uh, it was pretty crazy to see how hard, like some of those, uh, the virtual reality, the balance and things like that were, um, but, uh, within a couple of days, like you're able to kind of nail them down and, uh, you see pretty big improvements. Yeah. You know, I, I know that he has seen a lot of, um, not necessarily professional athletes, but like, you know, hardcore athletes who yeah. are marathon runners and, and do all sorts of different things. And I think that demographic has a really hard time adapting after a brain injury because you're so used to pushing it so hard and, you know, doing like for you, hockey just comes naturally to you, right? Like a marathon yeah. runner, comes naturally to them. Um, and so when they've had a brain injury concussion and now they can't do like, I get it because I had so much eye trouble, like the motion, the up and down motion of running and, you know, in hockey, it's like, you're constantly looking yeah. and tracking that puck, you know, so I can see the benefit of just doing this sort of preventatively mm -hmm. to just really help you get a little more sharp yeah. Yeah. I think you definitely get the competitive edge for sure. And if anything, it also gives you a little bit of a, a platform and, and what to see and what to look for. And he kind of tells you a couple of things. I, I have a couple of things to run through figure eights mm -hmm. uh, with my arms and legs to kind of activate different things of the, of the brain. I think the cerebellum um, and he has me do a couple of shakes of the hands to kind of see like you can kind of tell if anything's going on. Um, so you can kind of see if, if maybe there is something that you don't really pick up on, but um yeah, I think preventative is a big thing for, for sports because obviously you want to be at, at peak, uh, you know, competing level and um, you want to be at your best at all times because that's just the nature of the business. So um, yeah. it, seeing him definitely helps get to that. Yeah, I um the other day, well, a few weeks ago, I got taken down by bronchitis and I was just feeling off, like everything was off, my body, my head, my eyes. And I was so... I, it's been said, if you brush your teeth with the opposite hand, your non-dominant hand, that that really kind of helps get the, the brain jump started. And then with my other hand, I was doing those figure eights. <laughs> yeah, I got it's a couple funny. guys. Yeah, I got a couple guys in the team that the, they saw me doing it and they were kind of confused. Like, what are you doing? I'm like, it's, it's good for the brain. Like it's, I saw, uh, you know, a functional neurologist and he says it kind of helps get everything going. And it's funny now I have a couple guys before the games that are kind of, I see them off in the corner. I can see them working on it. They're doing the same side, the right, right leg, right arm, figure eights, then they're doing left and right. So uh, a couple of guys are buying into it and you can see that they've started doing it for a couple of weeks and there's like pretty big improvements on it. They, they struggle right away with the pattern, but they've got it down now. Yeah. It's crazy, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so <clears throat> was there anything Jeremy did with you that you were like, what? Um, like for me, it was the gyro stim. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think the gyro stim for sure. Like I was, 
intrigued. I was a little nervous. I'm not like a, uh, I, I don't do roller coasters mm-hmm. and crazy flips and rides and I'm not a big fan of heights. So like, not that that's uh, uh, any heights related, but spinning around and flipping upside down. Like I've never really done that. It's never been my thing. So I was, I was a little hesitant at first that I didn't, not want to do it but I was like I was curious as to how fast and he's like I'll start you off slow to kind of get a feel for it and then once I got the hang of it and noticed like the difference uh, and the improvement like now I'm like okay like can we like turn it up a little bit like how fast am I at like what are we trying like how many targets are we trying to get now it's like a little game and it's fun so I think that that part of it I, I think I like the most um and the virtual reality too I remember he only got that maybe a year and a half two years ago And I was like, oh, I don't know if I want to do it. I was worried it was going to make me dizzy. It's pretty cool, though. Like, it's so real. Yeah, that'd be the second thing, too. Like, uh, we didn't do it the first couple days. We kind of stuck to, like, the light board and some, uh, I think it was the metronome where you're kind of pounding to the beat, like, trying to get right on on the beat. Um, But once he got me on the virtual reality and doing the boat, uh, it was pretty crazy. You turn the speed up. It, it's it's crazy how realistic it is, and you feel yourself like uh, you know fighting the waves and mm-hmm. all your legs, like everything just gets activated. Then, what were I, you doing? Were you like um, wakeboarding behind the boat? No, just in the boat. You were like, in it. Would put me in the lunge and then in the boat, and you'd just be out in the ocean, like looking at an island, and the waves are coming in, and you could feel yourself just kind of rocking back and forth and kind of getting everything going and. Um, then he, I told him about the heights thing. I don't really like heights. He put me in the glass elevator. And oh, lucky took you. Me up, took, me up, <laughs> took me up to like the hundred floor. So that was kind of interesting, but, uh, <clears throat> that one's, that one's pretty fun too, but it's crazy how realistic it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I know it's been used a lot for people with phobias, like, um, yeah. oh, the people that don't like to be in crowds. He put mm-hmm. me in that one. I don't have a problem with that, but he put me in that one just so I could see it. And you're like in this mall with all these people. And they literally like will hit you. And like, I remember kind of being like that yeah, as yeah. they hit me. Yeah. It's crazy. Like it, we, like he did a bunch of different games on there. Like I was waving uh, a wand with the moon and trying to follow it, um, popping balloons, like, but it's crazy. Like you're spinning around all of a sudden you take the helmet off and you like, you've spun around like 90 degrees and you're like, Oh, like they didn't even realize, like thought I was staying straight. Yeah. Yeah. And then the metronome, um, Dr. Eric had done the metronome with me. And I remember the first time, cause you know, you don't know where your deficits are after a brain injury until like you're faced with them. And he had me do the metronome. And I was like, Oh cool. This will be like playing rock bands on yeah. the PlayStation. And I was like, yeah. Like it, I felt like, I mean, it was just like, what is wrong with me? Why can't yeah. I do this? It was crazy. Like I thought the same thing. I'm like, all right, this will be like pretty easy. Like this will be fun. He's like, all right, try to get uh, X amount of, you know, as close to perfect as you can. And the first couple of times I kind of struggled with it. Like I wasn't, it was either like too quick or like I would, then I'd wait and overcompensate. And it was like always just like a constant battle, like back and forth. And then, then after a couple of days, like I figured it out and then kind of hammered it in, but crazy how something like that simple is like, mm-hmm just takes a bit like you can't get it down yeah and then the light board i i'm guessing you're referring to the d2 with the red, the d- red light. yeah the d2 yeah. Light board, yeah you're hammering I, I like that one too that one's fun where you get uh you know 30 60 seconds and just hammer away at the uh the board did he have you do anything crazy with it like i've seen him do with some patients like after they hit a green then they have to do a squat or no have to count did, numbers actually we did one day i had to name different uh i think we did some sports teams where <laughs> I, I couldn't hit green and then i had to name sports teams or that or math problems i think we did a couple times too there's a math problem in the middle you had the focus so you're looking at the middle and then you got to see the light on the sides so you're kind of mm-hmm. working on like your peripheral um but it's pretty crazy how you like you can get pretty zoned in and then all of a sudden like you miss a couple lights and just have to expand like your vision a bit and um yeah, I, I, I like it. It's all kind of fun. Like I said, for an athlete, like it's you just turn it into like a little game and you like yeah. get pretty good. Um, did they use any ARP or laser on you? The lasers actually, yeah. The, I can't remember the name of the laser, but I think we, we would set up on there at least once a day, mm-hmm. different spots, sometimes on the head, sometimes on different things. I actually, so I saw them and, and realized like the benefit and then I kind of had like a little bit of like a back spasm and I mm-hmm. kind of went, I went back in there um and i texted him like hey can i come in like see if you can uh, help me out and i hooked me up to the arp for a bit and i was doing some twists and different things and got that loosened up and uh was back out there in a couple of days i love the arp um yeah. 
when I was seeing him, I still had really bad whiplash and some torn muscles and stuff in my neck. And I mean, that ARP, I swear that is what like yeah. fixed me. Yeah. I've never, uh, I've never worked out with it. I get it. The first time I've ever been hooked up to it was at his office, but we have a couple guys here in New York that work out with it. Um, and they're, they use it all the time and they love it and swear by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's fantastic. Um, and then the laser, did, did you say you use laser? Yep. Yeah. He would, uh, yep. I'd get the cool glasses and he'd put the laser. Yes. Shooting. <laughs> it was at the vagus nerve. He'd be shooting at different parts of the brain just to, I mean, you don't uh, you don't feel much, but I mean, he no. says like it, uh, the inflammation and things that you don't even see, so um, can't hurt any. Uh, no. I was yeah. curious if he was using that on your back too. <laughs> no, I, I, I might have actually done that in my back. Done both when, at the same time. Yeah, I think I did. I think I did a little bit of the uh, the ARP and some some rotations and just some functional movements, and then a little bit of laser. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So what you know, if you were to describe to somebody else what your experience was like there, like not an athlete, like just some average person who's had a concussion. Um, Mm -hmm. What would you kind of explain that your experience was like? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to recommend it to to everybody athlete or not just because I think uh, everything that he does there and he treats you for, I think you can pick up uh, on things you improve on just in day-to-day life reading, like you said, the eye tracking, just vision, you just feel more locked in conversation wise. You can kind of, I feel like sometimes it's hard to like stare, like lock in, like on a conversation, like eye to eye with somebody. And then all of a sudden you go in there and you get everything kind of mm-hmm. ironed out and it's pretty easy. Like you're just like laser focused in, like you don't have any problems. Like your eyes don't feel like they need to jump or you need to move. Walking even kind of feels like you're balanced. Like I said, walking and balance was the biggest thing. I think I noticed just day to day and uh, like everything just seems clear. Like mm-hmm. uh, it was, it was pretty evident that, um, yeah, not, not even being an athlete that you notice, you know, quite a bit of, uh, improvements in day-to-day life. Yeah. You know, I try to explain to people how my vision, so that was definitely like day two or three, like it just, it just was like crisp again. Yeah. And it's so hard to explain to people because obviously I could see, you know, I wasn't having double vision yeah. or anything, but just, it just like sharpened everything. That's what I said too. the reading. Like, I, like I said, I was in pretty good shape in the summer and didn't really think I've always, I've never had any issues with my eyes. I've never had contacts or glasses and I always thought I've been able to see really well. And I'm not like an avid reader, but I read a little bit here and there. And after seeing him a couple of times, I went back to my, and I was reading a book at home and I was like, it was just amazing. Like how, like, it was just so easy to just go line after like, just so locked in. Like it, sometimes you kind of notice like my eyes are jumping. I want to like skip ahead or like look around. It's like, um, like yeah, I didn't have any of that. I told him like I noticed biggest difference. I think reading right now. Yeah, yeah. And I remember when I had an original test with a different doctor. Um, she had me read out loud from a piece of paper, and I read you know the couple sentences, and then she's like, "Okay, now I want you to read it out loud without moving your head." And I was like, I was moving yeah. my head, so yeah. I was literally like moving my head yeah. instead of my. I was compensating for yeah. my eyes, and that, that just blew me away. I didn't even know I was doing it. Great. Yeah, crazy, but you don't even like again. It's like simple things like that. Like you, you can't see yourself or pick up on yourself because it just seems so natural that you've your body's adapted, and then he's able to kind of compensate for that and get it back uh, working smooth. And you know, as an athlete, and you've played since you were two. You know, I mean, just think of, I mean, even if you didn't have a concussion, you've had just hits and jolts and falls. And I mean, yeah. even the average person think about it as a child, how often you fall off your bike yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So yeah, we have a couple of kids now. It's, it's pretty amazing. They're all over the place rolling around falling. It's like, man, like you got to take it easy. Like you can't be jumping off. Like he's trying to, we have a two year old. He's like getting a little wild. Now he's climbing and jumping. We're like, all right, like take it easy. Like you can't be hitting your head, but <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. like even for athletes now, like in hockey, we play 82 games. Like at some point along the season, like you're taking bumps and hits that are, <clears throat> that are probably throwing you off a little bit where you need to kind of go in and get the tune up from, uh, from Dr. Schmo. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm so happy to know that it has been such a positive experience for you. And, you know, just, you don't realize how much you use your eyes, right? Like we use it for everything. I mean, it seems like 
like such a basic concept, but you don't think about using your eyes. Yeah. And when you're playing hockey, what are you doing? You're watching the puck like mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. There's so many things you're trying to track puck guy, like guys on the other team, your own guys. Like there's so many things going on uh, at a pretty fast pace where you need everything kind of dialed in and, and working efficiently. So I think he's, like I said, he's able to kind of get that uh, taken to a whole nother level. And I also feel like he's really able to explain it like, you know, he's clearly like so smart, yeah. but he can take it down to a level that helps you kind of like understand it. And yeah. I remember for me, it was so validating to have somebody actually believe the symptoms I was telling him because yeah. I've been so dismissed, you know? Yeah. yeah. When he, when he kind of pointed out my eye thing, I was like, kind of like, all right, like, I don't really know, like if that, like, I don't know if it's possible for my like eye to be up and out or whatnot, but he kind of like goes through the tracking and how your eyes are working. Like he does the tests on how you track the circles and back and forth and with your eyes closed in the dark and like you kind of start to see and you're like, Oh wow. Like, okay. Like, and then you go do th a couple exercises and you work on it and you start to realize like, okay, like, yeah, he's, uh, yeah, he's, he's spot on and he knows and he, he gets you exercises and you, you notice it right away. Yeah. Yeah. And those eye movements, you know, that's like one thing you cannot fake. Like there's no, no way to like, you know, like, say you're an athlete and they're tracking your eyes um to see if you can go back in the game like you can't fake those eye movements so um yeah, he, it's a really good indicator tests, he always tests me with the uh the, the optokinetic thing yeah the optokinetics and that's where I, I noticed a couple of those like all of a sudden like one way was good and the next way it was just kind of slot it would just like slip out and my eyes would just kind of give out and i'm like oh like i didn't see any of that and he's like yeah we'll do a couple spins and then all of a sudden Next thing you know, like you're picking up on everyone and you can feel it, you can feel it tracking. Isn't it crazy? I know I recently um, was actually headed to the clinic and I bonked my head getting in the car and I was like, oh boy. Yeah. And so Dr. Cassie worked with me, but she had it, and you know, left and right. I was like, oh, okay, not so bad. And then she went down and I was like, oh, there it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah and then great. after the gyro stim, fine. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, that's what every time he like he'll run me through it and like he'll find it's either up or down or whatever it is, and then like he spins me and tests it again. He's like, you can feel that, right? And I'm like, oh yeah, like everything's just locked in, like you can tell. Yeah, and it sticks. I mean, yeah. That's, yeah. I know that's the most common question I get from people is like, does it stick? And I'm like, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, that's the nice part about him too is that he's pretty honest too. Like when I saw him in the summer, he's like, you probably won't have any major whatever. Like you never really had any major issues or injuries, so like it'll be pretty, should be pretty swift. But he's like, did a couple of days worth, and he's like, you should be good to go. Like you don't need to come back here every week and you know get checked out. You just come back periodically as needed, um, and and depending upon how you're feeling. So I like that because you don't need to add anything more into um, overthinking or going in there all the time and wondering kind of what's going on and I think what's cool for you is you know I mean if you get checked into the boards or take a hard hit or even you know trip up over someone even if you're not like symptomatic you're like okay I, can, I know where to go I know yeah. who to yeah. see yeah exactly yeah you know he's there yeah well Brock thank you so much for being part of the summit this year I know you're crazy busy um what did you say you're leaving for how many days in a row I think we're we're home for a couple more days, but we have 32 games in 60 days, and then we're gone for a couple of weeks. So we're we're getting busy here the last couple of months. Yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time to do this Absolutely. and be a part Absolutely. of the summit. Um, we really appreciate it. No problem. Thanks for having me.